Hey, what's up guys? Kai here with a very important question for everybody. What type of shoes do white mages wear? Heels. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the continuation of Let's Play Valkyrie Profile 2 Silmeria. In the last episode, we made it through the ravine caverns, crossed the rainbow bridge Bifrost, defeated its gatekeeper Heimdall, and finally set foot in Asgard. You know, maybe next time Odin will get a better guardian than Heimdall. Maybe Gandalf? Hey, if that old man can stop a Balrog from passing, he can stop anything. Although, we do have a Zunday on our side. Hmm. Well, in any event, let's do some shopping from the Traveling Merchant. Who, by the way, is not the same merchant that we've seen throughout the game. In fact, when you first talk to this guy, he tells you that when he died, his son took over the family business, and he's the one that's down there on Midgard. And I can't show you that dialogue because I already took care of my purchases off-screen. But it's kind of nice how the developers took the time to give this NPC a backstory to help distinguish him from the other merchant who looks exactly the same. I hate it when games give the same character model to multiple NPCs. It's like, what the hell? But alright, starting with the weapons, he has the Durandal. Not a very good weapon at all considering it's absurdly overpriced. Which is funny because the Blue Gale is a very good weapon and by comparison is relatively cheap. But yeah, if you didn't find the Blue Gale in the Ravine Caverns, you can just buy one here. Now for armor, he has Magic Boots and Holy Gauntlets, both best in slot in terms of defense and magic defense. So you want to buy those for your whole party. Now keep in mind, we're going to be finding a Holy Gauntlet in the next dungeon, and if you recruited Cersei earlier in the game, you should already have one. Items, a lot of good items here that you want to stock up on. Mainly, charge breaks, might potions, overdrives, nectar potions, and flare crystals. Accessories, not very good at all. Crafted items, he has a lot of good stuff, well a lot of powerful stuff. But um, here we have the Orichalcum Staff, as I'm assuming it's called based on its description there. Most powerful weapon in the game for mages. Well, the main story, I should say, but I don't think it's worth the effort in, in crafting, and I'll go over that in more detail in just a few moments. Thread's Gauntlet, very powerful piece of armor for your hands, or gloves, I should say. Again, not worth the effort or the price, in my opinion. Here's the Miracle Guard, which I talked about earlier. Again, it gives you an 80% chance to block, so if you're using a tank, very good. The last item that you need, the Sacred O part, is going to be available two dungeons from now, so keep that in mind if you want to go after the Miracle Guard. And last but not least, the Solomon's Ring. Again, just to reiterate, I did buy this just for the sake of completing the animal side quest. It is definitely not worth the insane price tag or the effort of farming 45 uncommon drops to go feed three animals. But let's take a look at that all the same. Yeah, you be careful too, man. And I'll go over my setup when we get to the next dungeon, don't worry. So the Solomon's Ring. A ring that lets one talk to animals, and I'll be doing that later on. They say some pretty <laughs> amusing things. But more importantly, in battle, fortune smiles upon you when all digits in your HP value are the same. The higher the digit, the luckier. As vague as that is, what that does is when you equip this, you have a hidden status called the fortune status. And when all the numbers in your HP are the same, your character gets a buff. Now depending on which number that is, for example if it's all twos, or all fours, or all sevens, you get a different buff. Now the only one that really matters is if your HP is all sevens. Because you get a buff that gives you guaranteed item drops from enemies when you break body parts. It is really, really good and damn near essential if you're trying to farm some really rare and powerful items. Is it worth the 900k off price tag? Oh, hell no. But as I said, for the sake of completion, I got it. If you don't want to spend that kind of money but you still want the fortune item, you can just get the Sacred O part two dungeons from now because it has the exact same effect. Although it is a rare drop from a rare enemy. So it could take a little while, but it's definitely the better option. 
God, I still can't get over how mesmerizing this part of the game is. Everything from when you're walking across Bifrost and you can see the background transitioning from Midgard to this trippy dimensional rift and then to the heavenly Asgard when you reach the other side. Then you have Asgard itself being just gorgeous. And then everything still yet to come. Man, so cool. But anyways, enough fangirling. Have at you. Alright guys, welcome to Yggdrasil, my favorite dungeon in the game. Let's take a look at the map. Man, it's huge. Giggity. Yeah, a lot of people don't like this dungeon because they say it's too long and tedious, but I disagree. I think this is one of the better designed dungeons in the game, and I'm prob probably going to get lynched by the mob for saying that, but whatever. So alright, let's take a look at my setup here. Most notably, I put Rufus at the front of the party to take better advantage of his Killing Thorn attack. Gave him the Blue Gale, as mentioned earlier, and anything to boost his attack power, even though that is completely irrelevant. Alicia is the same as always, although I did take her off of the extreme 1 HP setup, gave her the Adamantite instead, although that's going to be replaced later on in the dungeon. Fyrus, same as always, anything to boost her magic power. And Ferent, again, same as always, anything to boost his magic power. Dragon Scales will be replaced very shortly into the dungeon, and I'm just too lazy to switch it out for anything, so whatever. Now for skills, I gave Rufus Dismantle to get the maximum benefit out of the Blue Gale Bow. And because of that, I gave him training, just to catch up on some levels. Again, the damage he's dealing is going to be completely irrelevant, because he's going to be one-shotting damn near everything in here. Whoops. Alicia, same as always, anything to boost her damage, and I gave her Magician Slayer, although I'll be switching that to Giant Killer later on in the, in the dungeon. Same with Fyrus, I gave her Beast Bludgeon for now, but again, I'll be switching that to uh, Giant Killer later on. Now, Ferret is a bit of an oddball here, and the reason is because, just like in Star Ocean games, when you recruit mages, they start out really, really good, but it doesn't take long for them to start declining in usefulness because they start to get outclassed by melee characters in terms of damage dealing and the closer you get to the end of the game the more you keep a mage around purely for a support role and not a damage dealing role and because of that the only skill that really matters here at least for me is free item that way I can use items using Ferent and not lose any AP all of these other damage boosting skills are just whatever you know, whether it's healing or buffs, that's really the only reason I keep a spellcaster around at this point in the game. But uh, let's get started here. I'm going to grab the experience pig law and that's it. You want to keep two open slots for soul crystals, or seal stones, <laughs> soul crystals, I gotta stop playing Final Fantasy XIV. But yeah, you want to have two open slots for seal stones to complete this dungeon. What are you waiting for? Let's go! Alright, we got some new enemies here. Armor Beetles. Uh, very easy because uh, Ferent can just use a Flare Crystal and one-shot them. Boom goes the dynamite. Oh, that reminds me, I also gave Ferent um, Explosion because uh, Fire is a good element to bring to the table here. And there's the leader, alright. Good way to get crystals if you weren't being blocked by that rock. It didn't look pretty, but what matters is who's standing at the end. That's right. I like to farm crystals from the Aesir using Killing Thorn and Explosion. Um, you also want to equip skills like Triple Edge or Double Edge or things like that if you want to farm some crystals. Alright, so the main gimmick in this dungeon are these crystals here. Yes! Uh, some of them shoot fireballs, some of them shoot ice, some of them are just wind currents yes! and things like that. So. Learning how to master them is what will get you through this dungeon. And some of them also create enemies. I will continue to battle my fate until this body is no more. Alright, so we got a new enemy in the back there, Hraysfelger. Not too threatening, but you can also get some great evil hearts from them if you still don't have any of those. Again, Flare Crystal, that's the way to go. Oh, 
that's the leader. Okay. Well, the other enemy in the back there, the plants, if you use a flare crystal, it's a very easy way to get um, fatal seeds. Prey Spelgers are beasts, so you want to have your beast killer character go after them. Easy as pie. Yep, easy as pie. This dungeon is very easy, by the way, but it's so much fun with this setup. Here we get some Valiant Greaves. Do they make you run hella fast like in Star Ocean 2? No, sadly they do not, but they're a pretty good piece of blue legwear. Shouldn't we rest a bit? We just started. Yeah, I guess so. Are you okay? You haven't said a word. I'm fine. I never thought I'd live to see a view like this with my own eyes. Incredible. I owe it all to you. I feel the same. If it weren't for you, I'd never have made it this far. You can throw that ring away, you know. In Asgard, time is eternal. You won't age at all while you're here. Go ahead. It's safe for you to take it off. I know. But it's become... my good luck charm. It's too big. It looks silly on you. Right? I'm heading for the top from here. You go to Valhalla. What? We're splitting up? Odin's no fool. He knows we're here. He's going to be looking for us. If I know him, he'll want his vengeance. Then all the more reason. I don't want you to get hurt. I don't care if I die. I would welcome death, but not you. Not now. You still have to get the Dragon Orb. Doesn't that matter more? I can't do it alone. I... I'll take my chances with you. I want to be watching when you become a god. Then we can go retrieve the orb together after that. Can't we? All right, then. Let's stick together. They blushing. Oh, got an ice yeah. crystal here. Yeah. This might take some time. And some more new enemies, giant trolls, who are gonna die instantly thanks to now. Rufus. Wow. 
Oh yeah, if I didn't say so already, uh, be careful around the edges because you can fall off very easily. It is done. Let's go. Alright, let's see. Down here, I guess fairy tincture. Awesome. Oh, damn it. Oh, that worked out. Charge break? Awesome. I'm gonna start using those a lot Sorry, more. But I don't want to get too close to these guys. I love Flare Crystals. So good. Lieutenant Diane, you got new legs. Time for this to end. It's finished at last. Here. Ah, uh, yes. Let us claim first blood. Man, there's Attack. another enemy I would like to show you guys. I'm just not running into it. Another good tactic here is you can actually use these uh, rocks and landscapes for cover from long range attackers. Time for this to end. Not that I've had a chance Man, to really that show that to you guys I yet. Gotta lie down. But uh, if you do see an attack radius or an attack indicator hitting you from behind that, you can intentionally walk into it not take any damage, but still get the AP recovery from it, which is pretty nice. Alright, here we get the Dancing Light Blessing. It increases your Photon Reflections by 4, and you're going to need that in order to complete the dungeon. Alright, the enemies that spawn from the Yellow Crystals can't be frozen. Alright, Human Sacrifices. These guys are a pain in the ass. So let's see here. Come on, guys. Thank you. Aha! Strike two! Strike two! But they do fall victim to dismantle. Just make sure you have at least some kind of elemental attack on Rufus. That way you can deal damage. Otherwise, dismantle won't work. Strike two! Virus is also a good choice here. Aim for the head to finish it quicker. Yep, that's the plan. Headshots all day, every day. Thank you, Blue Gale and Dismantle, for being obscenely overpowered. Here we get a Witch's Arcanum. Awesome. And I need to heal Alicia. Gotta make use of that Edelman type. There's another enemy you can run into out here called a Black Crystal, I believe. And those guys are dangerous because they can use Astral Maze, which will transfer your party out of battle, essentially giving you an instant game over. So you want to start that battle out with a Nectar Potion if you're unsure about killing them quickly or not. So now, for this part, come on. I actually want to get Zunday up in here. Make sure he has... Nope. Sweep Dive. Sort of a knee. Okay. We have nothing to fear. Alright, new we enemy in the back there. The Strayer. Time for this to end. Who has a really good item that I want to get. Which is why I brought Sunday along. Ooh, you would do an AoE attack like that. Oh, you bitch. Alright, well, we'll kill this guy first. This is it. 
And as you may have noticed, uh, this dungeon is made up of an outside area and an inside area, with different battlefields, different enemies, so on and so forth. Okay, so for this item, you just gotta break his head. Oh, pressed the wrong button. Shit. There we go. Damn it. Okay, I'll try it one more time on screen. Some of you may already know what item I'm trying to get here. And it's very easy to farm. You just come in, come out, fight him again, try again. You don't get it. Things are getting interesting. Another new enemy, King Slugs. Nothing too special here. Good way to farm royal jellies, though, if you want to craft uh, some golden eggs later on. Ah, perfect. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna do this off screen. I'll be right back. LPR's curse strikes again. That was a close fight. There we go, the Bone Mask. Just like the Fatal Seed, it increases your attack power Sorry, and critical I'll hit rate when you're time. inflicted with frailty. Although the difference here is that the Bone Mask also increases your magic defense and magic power by 10%. And as you saw, it's fairly easy to get. So I want to give that to Ferent over the Dragon Scales just to boost his magic power a little bit. I may or may not give him frailty status. Probably not. Also, I misspoke earlier about those giant... Damn it. Those giant snails. They're not the ones that give you the royal jellies. It's another enemy yeah. later on in the dungeon. Alright, let's go over here now. And fight a mini-boss. I want to keep Zunday in my party for this one as well. But I do want to switch his attacks around to have... A smashing Swing? I think that's what it is you can get another really good item from this battle. Yeah. Showtime. Good. Good. Okay, the Highlander. There can be only one. So this one you want to break his upper left arm, which is going to be a little tricky. If I can dash cancel do it. Demon yes, we got it, but we didn't get the item. Of course not. And I'm not going to leave the dungeon and come all the way back in here just to fight this guy again. If you break his upper left arm, you can get just the... As I expected. Oh, what is it called? The Sage Quartz, that's what it is. And you need the Sage Quartz in order to craft the best armor in the game. I want to get a few of those at some point, probably after I beat this dungeon, I'll come in here and farm a few. But just know that's where you get it from. And here we get the Magical Light Blessing, allows your photons to break those magic crystals. Oh, right, I need to get Sunday out of my party now. We're done with him. In the process of trying to get the Bone Mask, uh, I did gain a couple levels for everybody. Uh, Ferent also learned Astral Maze, so now he can one-shot enemies. One thing to remember, though, is enemies who get transferred don't give experience. Okay, so this item is a little tricky to get. If you want to break this to stop the airflow. And you get the Flame Mist. Really good piece of armor for mages and sorcerers. It um, makes you immune to, I think, every element, or most of them and it protects you against Frozen. Now, what the game doesn't tell you... Yeah, see there? Yeah, what the game doesn't tell you is that this will actually turn your character into a ghost, meaning they're vulnerable to magic attacks, but completely immune to non-elemental attacks, just like ghost enemies are. God damn it. So yeah, it's one thing to keep in mind if you're fighting enemies who uh, use a lot of physical attacks. Hmm. You know what? Let's use it. Oh, I can't use Astral Maze. Alright, we're gonna take a hit here because I need the AP. Give me those crystals. Aw, oh, 
Oh yeah. Aim for the head to finish it quicker. Alright, so for this one, just uh, bounce a few photons down there. Yes! Game. Stick together and charge! Nope, still no uh, black crystal enemy, but that's okay. Strike two! Strike two! This is no place for amateurs. Would be a lot easier if I actually destroyed this crystal here, so I don't have to worry about enemies. Maybe it's this way. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, that was close. Here we get the Valiant Helm. Pretty good piece of headgear. And now we have to drop down. A little bit of backtracking here. Well, this dungeon really has the perfect balance between puzzles, battles, platforming. Overall, it's a really, really well designed dungeon. Even if the backtracking is a little tedious. We're going to be doing that quite a bit in this place. Here we get a foolproof talisman. Awesome. Can never have too many of those. Although those are way more useful in the post game. Oh yeah, here we get the paper tiger blessing. It's basically an adamantite. I don't really care for it myself. Alright, let's go down this way. We get the Sword of Sylvan, alright. And you know what, I'm just gonna meet you back up there after I fall down and do some more backtracking. Alright guys, we're back, and on the way Rufus gained a level and he learned Guard Ringing Force. Awesome. So now, let's go up here to the right. Oh, wait, got up. There we go. A little tricky there. All set. Weapons ah, there we go. There's the black jewels I talked about earlier. Again, you want to use a, what is it, Nectar Potion to protect yourself, if you don't think you can kill them quickly. They can also summon friends. So let's see here, um, they are magicians, so Alicia should be pretty useful here. Yeah, good damage. Their buddies they summon are also magicians, Idises. They don't drop anything worthwhile, so let's just go for the kill here. of necromancy. Aim for the head to finish it quicker. I don't think I've ever gotten that item before. Ooh, Gale wins. That's a really good attack for Alicia. I like it. Don't use it on flying enemies though, because you're gonna miss. <laughs> but it's a multi-hitting low attack. Here we get an elixir. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it quits here, guys. This is a good, good stopping point. When we come back next time, we will continue the ascent of Yggdrasil. But until then, as always, thank you for watching. My name is...